Hello fellow copy botherers, in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Sage or Breville Oracle Touch. and first use video with the Oracle Touch and click here for that. And in that video, I said I'd use it for a bit and then come back with an overall review. So that's what I'm doing. First though, I'm gonna make a couple of coffees just for anyone who hasn't seen the Oracle Touch in action and because I need coffee. By the way, I'd love to know how many people are watching my video with a coffee. If you are, leave a comment below telling me what you're drinking. So let's make coffee. I'm using my favourite coffee at the moment from the Coffee Works, which is my coffee, my website, seaworks.co.uk, fruitcake blend, really, really nice for, well, everything really, but I'm really enjoying it for flat white at the moment, really bold tasting, but nice as well, you know, it's not sort of a smack in the face, very, very nice coffee, but obviously I'm going to say that, so try it for yourself. Seaworks.co.uk, use a discount code YT25 for 25% off your first order. And if you're already a customer, not a new customer, use a discount code, a code Coffee Botherers for 10% off. And that is a permanent discount code. You can use that all the time as a viewer or reader. I don't actually like to fill hoppers. Little tip, keep your coffee in an airtight container or yeah, don't keep it in the bag, keep it in an air airtight container and just shove in what you're about to use rather than leaving it to sit in the hopper. Okay, these have got a gasket on the lid so it'll keep it relatively airtight from the top, but it's not gonna be airtight from the bottom with the burrs and so on. So I would never leave lots of coffee sitting in the hopper. Just use what you're about to, uh, just put in what you're about to use. I am. Um, Going to make a flat white. I'm using oat milk because I am using oat milk at the moment. I've gone off moo milk, so don't expect much in terms of latte art because I'm still relatively new to uh, steaming and pouring with oat milk. Bit simple. You can add your own drinks and I've added Kevspresso, which I've set to a 32 second brew time. And you change the brew temperature, by the way, in the main settings, the actual brew temperature. So I've got KFW, Kev's flat white that I've set up. You see, I just pressed a touch screen and nothing happened. I don't like touch screens. I much, much prefer just shop buttons. That's something that winds me up. But to be fair, it winds me up with phones as well. I much prefer, I much preferred, I didn't like the phones themselves, but talking about phones, Blackberries. At the time I last had a Blackberry, you know, iPhones were out and Samsung Galaxies were out and so on. I was still clinging on, you know, using a, a Blackberry, but because I loved the analog, you know, keys, actually being able to feel what you're pressing. I don't like touch screens. I prefer the Oracle. Press a button when you want hot water. Press a button when you want to pull the shot. Press a button or a lever when you want steam. Press a button when you want hot water, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, Kev flat white, KFW. Got that set up to 30 second pour. I've got the milk set 65 degrees Celsius. You can change that dead easily to Fahrenheit if you're across the pond. I've got the steam set, the froth set to four. Let me change that to three, actually. I've selected Kev's flat white. Sticking the porter filter in. Let it grind. Start the milk now. Keep the one to purge, and to do that, you can either just press the milk button, press it to stop, or you can lift it out, press the manual button, and press it to stop. 
milk jug in place. That's about what you Brew. One's auto purging. That'll do. Right, I'm going to make a uh, what am I going to make? Uh, Americana. And I'm not going to mess around with this, I'm just going to do factory preset so you can see what you get if you took this out of the box and press factory preset. So Americano and then grind. Well, I can do that or I can press that. Water's on its way in there now. I've just done that because this is only a six, seven ounce cup. A medium is obviously. <laughs> a bit bigger than that. You can program all that, you can customise it, etc. Or get a bigger cup, but Americano. Decent looking Americano, it has to be said. But how does it taste? It tastes rather good. Well, I would say that, wouldn't I? because it's my coffee and I made it. But yeah, very nice, chuffing hot as well. So if you like, you know, some people, some complaints on bean to cup coffee machine, super automatic coffee machine is the temperature of things. Well, temperature of this is uh, rather warm, as you can see, or maybe you can't see from the steam coming off it. But there you go, making coffee with the Oracle Touch. So if you've not seen this machine before, as you saw, it's very easy to use. It's fast, it's intuitive, you don't really need to read the manual. Most of it is self-explanatory, really. It's very clever, it's very flexible, you have control over just about everything with all the factory preset drinks, and you can add your own custom drinks and save them with your own name. Yeah, yeah, it's smart, it's clever, it looks cool, but what's the coffee like? 
The coffee is chuffing mega. The thing is, this is a traditional espresso machine and traditional espresso machines make the best espresso. You might be pulling a face now, I'm not sure, I can't see you. YouTube haven't developed the technology to allow that yet. But although this might not look like a traditional espresso machine, and because retailers often classify it as a bean to cup or super auto, many people don't get that this is a traditional espresso machine. It uses porter filters, traditional baskets, nine bars of pressure, pre-infusion. It's a traditional espresso machine. It doesn't have a brewing unit, and that's the main difference between a traditional espresso machine and fully automatic espresso machines or bean to cup coffee machines. Those kind of machines are fine, but they're not traditional traditional espresso machines and they don't produce traditional espresso. They're great really considering how simple they are to use and most bean to cup coffee machine users are more than happy with the cup quality so that's fine but what if you want the kind of cup quality you'd get from a traditional machine in the hands of someone who knows how to get the best results with it but you don't want to put in the time and effort to develop the necessary skills and you want a more convenient more hands-off approach. You get this or the Oracle and click here for my video on the Oracle. They've basically taken the Sage or Breville dual boiler, which are very capable traditional espresso machines, and they've added an integrated grinder, auto dosing, auto tamping, auto milk texturing, and then on the touch version, they've taken it to the next level in terms of providing that level of bean to cup machine experience with the swipe and go touch screen and the personalization. It's not as precise as using the dual boiler, for example, but the level of compromise for that level of convenience is very small. It's not the same compromise in cup quality I'd be making if I chose to use a bean to cup coffee machine or super automatic espresso machine instead. In fact, I'd challenge most people, myself included, to be able to detect the difference between a flat white made with the dual boiler and one made with the Oracle. And I will do that experiment at some point, by the way. I wouldn't want to use the touch though. I like old fashioned buttons in the same way that I get frustrated trying to type on my smartphone and I wish I could go back to the old Blackberry with keys. By the way, am I alone here or do you also wish that with modern smartphones there was an option for Blackberry style keyboards? If you're with me, just put a comment below something like bring back keys or if you think I'm weird, let me know with a comment such as Kev, you're an old fart and you've got fat thumbs. Anyway, I much prefer the shop buttons on the Oracle to having to use a touch screen on the Oracle Touch. I prefer to be able to just press a hot water button when I want hot water. I don't like the fact that I have to select a drink on the touch screen first before it lets me grind. I just prefer the analog simplicity of the Oracle. The Oracle isn't that far away from home barista machines in the way that you interact with it. It's just as clever and automated as the touch, but the user interaction on the Oracle for me is more like the home barista traditional espresso machine experience. And I prefer that personally, because that's what I'm used to. If you're used to traditional machines, then you might be the same. You might find that the touch screen is a hindrance, not a help, and you might prefer the more analog controls of the Oracle. If you're not a home barista though, and if you're not accustomed to using a traditional machine, then you might prefer the touch. If you and other people in the home or office have no interest in learning about making coffee and you just want to swipe a screen and select the coffee you want, then the touch might be perfect for you. Even if you know nothing at all about espresso machines, you'll be able to tweak each drink until it's perfect for you. Add your own favourites, save with your own name. For example, on this one, as you saw, I've got a Kev Presso setting and a Kev Flat White KFW setting. And everyone can do that. It's really, really simple to do. The only snag, of course, is that these machines aren't cheap. To be fair, they're not the most expensive machines out there. There are one touch super automatics that cost more, but still the more money than many people will consider investing on an espresso machine. Just keep in mind though, if you're in the UK, it's worth emailing me to see if I've got a discount code to share. I do sometimes have discount codes, discount codes that I can share with subscribers. So go to coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash brew time to subscribe to my brew time mailing list and then email me, Kev, at coffee blog.co.uk and if I've got a discount code to share, I'll share it with you. So in a nutshell, if you want super automatic convenience, but you're not willing to compromise on cup quality, then the Oracle Touch is possibly perfect for you. And if you're used to using a home barista setup as I am, but you want the convenience of auto dosing, auto grinding and tamping and auto steaming, and you're willing to compromise slightly on the ability to very precisely dial in, then I'd have a look at the Oracle rather than the Oracle Touch. If you have any specific question about the Oracle Touch that I've not answered in this video, please let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to click the like button. Thanks. 
There's an island somewhere in the middle of the Pacific Ocean that moves around so you can never find it unless you happen to be within a few miles of it on a plane, in which case you probably end up on this island for some bizarre reason. And if someone doesn't click a like button every 108 minutes, an enormous amount of electromagnetism will be released. So please click the like button, thanks. And yeah, I've just watched the entire 27 seasons or however many there are, I've lost for the third time, and yes, I'm still absolutely none the wiser. No idea what happened there. Dude, be cool. If you enjoyed this video, why not click here to watch another one? If you've got several months to spare and you want to be completely confused, why not go and watch Lost? Also, don't forget to become an official Coffee Botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere of my face to subscribe. Tatty bye.